If you're a fan of anime, there's a good chance you're not a fan of this. <laughs> Live action anime adaptations. The four worst words an anime fan can hear besides go take a shower. Fair enough, I say. They've been burned by both. So you've got an anime, or, well, actually a manga comes first usually, and it does really well. It makes a shit ton of yen, so a bunch of guys in a studio get an idea in their heads. What if we took this thing and made it better? Yeah, it's already massively successful and beloved in its current form as doodles, but what if we made it into real art instead of this Nick Jr. PBS bullshit? It's not a bad idea if you consider that cartoons are for crayon sniffing babies after all, and in the long history of live action anime adaptations, we've gotten like, four good ones, and like two financially profitable ones. That proves they were always meant to be like this. If you don't think about it too hard, doing live action film adaptations of anime kinda seems like an alright idea. After all, anime is the only medium where you regularly have to excuse casual pedophilia, so making a version of a series that someone like your aunt could enjoy, mass appeal, could be a huge hit. All you gotta do is remove the lollycon and- ah, fuck. But you know, that shouldn't be an issue, because around here we all know that my favorite anime is Initial D. The only anime where all of the female characters are over 18, if not in their mid-twenties. Oh, uh, what about Mika? She was 17. Uh, that's in fifth stage. Nobody watched fifth stage. She doesn't count. If you don't know what initial D is, fuck you. I'm not telling you. Nah, <laughs> just kidding, can you imagine? Anyway, Initial D is a series about a kid named Takami Fujiwara discovering that he's an incredibly skilled drifter and street racer and shaking up the world of underground Japanese street racing. It's a series with tons of iconic moments, lovable characters, <coughs> CGI races, and a soundtrack so iconic, it's more well-known than the series itself. With the boom in car-related movies that came in the wake of The Fast and the Furious, the good folks in Hong Kong said to themselves, oh, what about that? And Shuichi Shijino looked up from his giant pile of yen and said, I don't care. Initial D, the Hong Kong movie, is an interesting little film. Fans of the original series say, it different, so I hate it. While other people say, I like it, it's cool. But what's the truth? Well, it's a little bit of both, see? Okay, so I've been studying this film pretty intensely to try and find all the differences, and I think I know what's got everyone so upset. There's no Shingo in this movie. It doesn't take an initial D scholar to know that this movie took some creative liberties with the source material. For instance, probably the most well-known change is that the gas station they work at is now called Dr. Drive. This movie has a fairly familiar plot for fans of the source material to point at their screens and recognize. It's still about an autistic tofu delivery boy who drives his dad's Toyota Corolla fast as shit on a dangerous mountain, but his tires aren't the only thing he's tearing up, as he also begins falling in love with his classmate Natsuki Mogi. Or Mogi, Natsuki, I don't remember. Is it possible to drift and have a girlfriend at the same time? Only time will tell. How much time? Approximately 109 minutes. But in that 109 minutes, the writers will attempt to squeeze in 150 chapters and three stages worth of plot. That's right, everything from What's in 86 to I Will Join Project D. That may sound like way too much material to fit into one movie. It is, it is, it is way too much material to fit into one movie. But it doesn't end there. Ryosuke and Keisuke have been fused into a new character named Ryosuke. Itsuki is now the leader of the Akina Speedstars and the son of Yuichi, the owner of Dr. Drive. Ikatani and Kenji have either been wiped from existence or retired to nameless, one of these guys status. And for all intents and purposes, Bunta Fujiwara, Takami's father, is not even in this movie. Those of you who have seen this movie are probably monkeys screaming at your screens right now telling me that Bunta is in this movie. He did not get thrown ass first into a sausage grinder. No, no he isn't in this movie. There may be a character named Bunta Fujiwara in this movie, but Bunta Fujiwara is not in this movie. They took our favorite binge smoking wise street racer turned tofu man and made him into an abusive alcoholic, 
barely functional piece of shit. And I don't even know why. It's not like a plot point or anything. It's not like Takumi wants to escape his abusive father. It's just like something that's in the movie, like Takumi's shoes. Except those are actually accurate, so never mind. There's a cool scene like five minutes into the movie where Takumi tries to drag his unconscious blackout drunk father upstairs and just bashes his head on the stairs and gives him a massive wound and Takumi's just like, I don't care. Anyway, the character changes, well, in some cases entirely pointless, are mostly forgivable, I'd say. Itsuki being Yuichi's son is pretty harmless. We never saw his parents or Yuichi's children, so it's not like we're missing out on anything with that change. In fact, the conjoining of their lineages leads to some good humor in the film. Itsuki is another character who's almost entirely different from his 2D counterparts, but since he's the only comic relief in the movie, I'm chill with it. I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller, I wish I had a girl who looked good, I would call her. Itsuki still embodies the role of wannabe street racer, but with the added benefit of being drippy with it and iced out like a freezer, but he's also like an insane asshole. He's always stealing money from his dad, begging for money from his dad, blackmailing his dad to steal his dad's car, begging for money from his dad again, but damn it, he's just so goofy. That classic Itsuki lovability shines through somehow. Like this scene, where he shows up to a street race in a professional suit, calls Ryosuke and Nakazato gay, and then crashes his car in the first turn. Or this scene, where he shows up to a race in a minivan, or this scene where he... Why did it go slow motion? Is this a mistranslation? God damn it, this scene is so funny. Like, I'm a jerk, I jerk off too, then he kicks a trash can. Good shit, Hong Kong. Y'all keep going beast mode in every movie I see from y'all. Fucking love that scene. Initial D. This is Robert De Niro. I'm from Hollywood, or Hollyweird as I like to put it. Uh, that's a little ha-ha from Bob over here. But did you know, and this is a fact, did you know that you could eat a hot dog every single day? There's so many of these things. There's so many hot dogs. You could eat a hot dog every single day and you'd never eat the same one twice. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, you know. If I went over every little difference in the plot or characters, we'd be here for like, I don't know, like 17 minutes. Plus the anime changes shit from the manga too, so it's not like anyone is really free from sin. The anime rearranges the placement of races, removes Ryosuke's cousin slash love interest, and cuts an extremely important scene featuring Natsuki's bare ass for, in my opinion, absolutely no reason. I'm not the biggest fan of how they handled squeezing this much story into such a short time span, but for what it is, it happened, it's not terrible, just not great either. But none of that shit matters because nobody cares about the slice of life coming of age story in Initial D. This movie could make Natsuki serve in the IDF, whatever, IDGAF, because it's all about the high octane and exciting street races. And to the filmmaker's credit, the drifting is great. Yep. That's drifting, they're doing it, and by god those cars look dead on to how they're supposed to look. It's not every day a fictional thing is brought to life so convincingly. The props department literally had to invent the AE86, the R32 Skyline, the RX-7 FD, the S13 in every car in this movie because they had only existed in the manga and anime beforehand. So thanks Media Asia Films, these, these cars rock. The races are fine. I think they really lack the required energy they need both in the editing and the screenwriting. I just watch them and I'm like, yep, there they go. This is some nice PS2 pause music right here and it's over. We don't really know what any of the drivers are thinking, the music is really lax and it just ends really fast. What made the races so good and memorable in the original series was the build up and hype surrounding them and... The races need to be important both to the overall narrative and be exciting to watch and accessible for an audience who most likely can't even drive stick shift, like me. While it may shatter the whole show don't tell fandom, 
You need to hear the racers' internal monologues and the guys on the sidelines saying shit like, Whoa! He shifted into ninth gear with his butt cheeks so he could corner using both hands. And then I'm sitting there like, Whoa! He shifted into ninth gear with his butt cheeks so he could corner using both hands. It makes it accessible. It also adds tension and energy to the battles knowing how each racer is feeling at any given moment. Some may see it as wasting time and over explaining because they assume the audience is dumb, but it's the difference between one of the most iconic moments in any car slash racing related media ever and some scene where a guy in an 8.6 passes another guy in an R32. Also, the audience is dumb. Statistically, at least one person watching this thinks I was serious when I said the props department invented all the cars in this movie. It was actually the film's car department who did that. Take the inertia drift scene for example. In this movie, we don't get the exciting music, we don't get Keisuke's panic thoughts and the shock that the 8.6 just passed him and did an inertia drift. We just get Nakazato and Takumi looking bored as shit as a chill track underscores the scenes. We don't really know why what just happened is cool at all. Which reminds me, there's no Eurobeat in this movie. Oh, fuck this. Shit, my window is closed. To be fair, it is an adaptation of the manga, not the anime, and there wasn't any Eurobeat in the manga. I don't think. I actually haven't read the manga, Readings for Nerds. I only know the panel of Natsuki's ass because that specific chapter isn't for nerds, it's for cool guys. So obviously I've read it. Why there are now four movie adaptations of Initial D that all remove the Eurobeat is such an odd choice in my eyes. Or my ears. It would be like making a new Doom game with no metal music, like that's your thing. Eurobeat is so much Initial D's thing that the entire genre is associated with that franchise. Can any other musical genre be linked to one specific franchise and they don't want to include that in the movie? Coincidentally, there was another anime series in the early 2000s that used Eurobeat during its action scenes called Hoop Days. <laughs> which coincidentally was animated by the same studio that did Fourth Stage. And coincidentally, the main character of that series is also named Takumi Fujiwara. And, and if you, you can believe, believe it. it, there's a scene in Hoop Days where they go to the movies and they're watching Initial D Fourth Stage. Anyway, that was a completely pointless tangent, but I, I found all this shit while I was reading the Wikipedia page for Eurobeat, and, uh, bl it blew my fucking mind. <laughs> while obviously I love Eurobeat, the function it served was to hype up the scene. It technically doesn't have to be Eurobeat, even the rock music in the new Legend films work better than what they're doing here. <laughs> It's like they got these tracks from an album labeled Music, it is boring. Fans have made the effort of putting Eurobeat tracks over these scenes, and while I think it's an improvement, the lack of monologuing and explanations really take away from the excitement for me. Oops, I accidentally hyper fixated on ways that it different for like 10 minutes straight, after I said there's no point in doing that because so much is different. You would think with how much is different and how massive and mighty the initial D fanbase is, this movie would be lauded as a big stinky winky of a franchise, but that's actually not the case at all. A ton of people really love this movie. When you separate this mass from the body it grew off of, you can step back and view it as its own thing. For a movie about an aloof guy hitting saucy drifts and getting cheated on by his hot girlfriend, it's a nice time. Now sure, the races don't pull me in as much as I wish they did. Two hours later. Although currently the Ark of the Covenant is believed to be either in a church in Ethiopia or beneath Jerusalem, but the point is Keisuke removing his pop-up headlight in fifth stage ruined my life and one eternity later. I can admit as a filthy American who only knows excess, I never wear the same socks twice. There's probably some sort of cultural divide that prevents me from fully embracing this movie. For instance, the scene when Natsuki says that Takumi's abuse scars are sexy. Like, is that just a Hong Kong thing? I hope not. Maybe that's why I thought the I'd jerk off too scene was so funny. Maybe over there that was an Oscar bait line. Instead of a master bait line. <laughs> it's a stylish and sleek movie with cool cars and cool dudes, decent laughs, and some good music at times. 
specifically the music that Takumi's actor Jay Chow wrote for the movie. I neglected to mention this earlier, because I didn't care at the time, but Takumi is played by a famous Hong Kong musical artist and the two songs he wrote for this movie, Drifting and especially All the Way North, go absolutely crazy. Like, I've been listening to All the Way North, like, so much while I've been editing. They're just not in the race scenes, which is specifically what I was bitching about earlier. I think it's a little bloated and probably would have benefited from doing its own thing more and leaving elements like the Emperors out of the movie entirely, but it's not that bad. However, you should take everything I'm saying with a grain of I like Dragon Ball Evolution though. I often find myself extremely conflicted on what I want out of an adaptation. Part of me feels like, well, we have the original already, so why not just do something new and crazy with it? Even if it's totally fucking stupid like Dragon Ball Evolution because at least that's like a funny movie. Or you could end up with Speed Racer 2008 that's not based off any existing Speed Racer episodes or mangas and it's incredible. Is it better to be faithful and honor the fans in original work or to just make something good that works in the body of a film? Old Boy and Battle Royale were both based off manga and changed a ton of shit and they're incredible movies. Just because something different doesn't inherently mean it's bad at all. At the end of the day, whether you're a book reading bitch or a stinky weeb or a Hong Kong cinema connoisseur, there's a version of Initial D out there for you. Not everyone has the time or desire to watch 38 hours of a show where half of it looks like a Gmod machinima. While obviously I'd still advocate for at least watching the first stage of Initial D, my blood pressure would only barely rise if you said you liked this movie. After all, we're all just out here doing the best we can with our silly little opinions on things. Tokyo Drift was better though.